Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to discuss one possible way you could use a nuclear engine on Starship. I've already discussed how you could use one on SLS and that is a much better idea. <laughs> this is not quite so good an idea but we'll take a look at it. Uh, this was brought up by Tough SF, uh, who wrote an article and I'll link the article in the video description. And uh, Tough SF is also known as Matterbeam. And it was a very thorough article on many ways that you could use nuclear engines on Starship, but did not, as far as I could tell, use this particular way, uh, partly because I think the assumption was that SpaceX would want to use Starship only in the full mission plan, you know, uh, going to Mars, landing, coming back, uh, air breaking, landing on Earth. Uh, my assumption is that they might be a little bit more open to variations, I'm hoping they are, because I really don't like the one ship fits all kind of mission plan. And the reason I think that they're probably going to be open to specializing starships for their missions is because of the lunar lander, right? Uh, in order to fulfill NASA's lunar lander contract, they made variations to Starship. First of all, taking off the fins, uh, putting extra engines on the top so that uh, you wouldn't have a whole bunch of regolith issues uh, on landing. And yeah, so, and that means that that Starship, the lunar Starship, can no longer come back into Earth's atmosphere or anything like that. It'll just be a dedicated lunar lander, which is fine, you know, and good. So, the possibility I thought up was maybe we can have one that's just going to do transfers between Earth, Moon, and Earth, Mars. And in that case, that saves you from needing the sea level engines. So what we're going to do, and uh, so in the article, uh, the vacuum engines were being replaced by the nuclear engines. And then you needed three, uh, which is a hassle and uh, heavy. Uh, in this case, we're replacing the sea level engine uh, engines, and we only have one nuclear engine. So it's not as heavy because each of these, and we're, we're going with a uh, nuclear engine that burns methane because the one thing you really don't want to do with Starship is fill it with hydrogen. Uh, that would make for a very light Starship, but it can't really get to orbit. It doesn't have enough delta V. And if you try and force, of course, it's lighter for super heavy, but then super heavy won't be able to land back at, uh, at Boca Chica or whatever. So you want super heavy back. And so you need dense fuels in Starship. And so what we're going to do is run the Timberwind engine. In this case, I call it, it's a variation on my Timberwind. Uh, and it is based on numbers from uh, Matterbeam slash Tough SF's article. Uh, the engine that was proposed in there was a 1,000 kilowatt per kilogram uh, efficiency engine, a nuclear engine, of course. And what we were talking about when it comes to using methane instead of hydrogen, hydrogen would give you like a thousand seconds of specific impulse, so very efficient. Uh, methane will only get you 625, according to the article. And uh, the article was proposing a 2,610 kilonewton engine and three of them uh, for, uh, and they were each going to be 8.4 tons. Instead of that, I've cut it in half. So what we've got is half of one of those engines and it's 1,305 kilonewtons and 4.2 tons. So we've reduced our dry mass uh, really uh, to a very good uh, comparison to the three sea level raptors. So it'll maintain its balance, that's important. Uh, so that is helpful and we don't have to worry about that so much. Now, in order to make this work though, we need to have methane, lots, lots more methane. We don't want to have, I mean, normally in Starship, most of the propellant is actually the oxygen. The methane is actually lighter than the oxygen. But what we can do is swap the tanks. Methane and oxygen have similar thermal properties. So it's not like hydrogen and oxygen where hydrogen needs to be kept really, really cold by comparison. Uh, so we will fill what used to be the oxygen tank, which takes up more volume, with methane, and we'll fill the methane tank with oxygen. When it's doing aer uh, aero captures and all that business, it'll mostly be empty anyway. So that would, uh, changing which one is which does throw the balance off a little bit, unless they're mostly empty. So 
then in that case, I don't think it's too much of a big deal. Doing that means that we have surplus methane for the, the, for the nuclear engine in this case. And in this case, I have underfueled it because we have the problem where we don't have six really powerful engines anymore. And so to get a decent amount of thrust weight ratio, we can't fully fuel Starship on launch. We'll fuel it when it's in orbit. But this will give us enough delta V to get to orbit, I hope. Now, the nuclear engine is a little bit long, and I've tucked it in as much as possible, but since we're using the same tanks, we can't tuck it in too much, otherwise it'll effectively be clipping into the tank. So we do need an addi additional skirt here to uh, extend out so that we can fully protect the nuclear engine, otherwise it's gonna be hanging out back. And we don't want that if we are doing any sort of aero captures. So it is like we will need some extra stuff here. I've kept the fins on, uh, on the assumption that we still need them for aero capture around Mars. Aero capture around Earth is a dicey thing. Somebody on Twitter pointed out that people might not uh, be happy with a nuclear engine aero capturing. I think for the initial capture around Earth, we can use propellant, just propellant capture, because uh, capture around Earth after a trip to Mars doesn't actually take that much delta V. It's actually a fairly lightweight sort of low delta V thing. I think it's uh, max 1000 meters per second, so very manageable. Uh, then maybe we can sneakily aero break down <laughs> uh, very slowly or something. We'll get the crew off first uh, with like, we could even Orion them out uh, <laughs> because it's in a high orbit at that point. So you could uh, like dock something to it to get them out, maybe a dragon if you like. But uh, yeah, so the dragon has uh, lower, well, they'll figure something out. Anyway, the, the heat shield area is small and it's very heavy, so it's not ideal for the high orbits. But anyway, what are the benefits? Why would you want to use a nuclear engine for this? Well, it's easier to refuel. And so let, let's change things up here. Let us uh, dump the oxygen. Oh, this isn't the full amount of methane. Whoops. I just noticed that number is wrong. Uh, we have spare room. I must have mistyped it. Where are you, methane? Okay. We essentially want the remaining room to be methane, but I had a particular number here, so I'll put that in. Okay. So that's how much maximum methane we have. And so we have a 100 ton payload in here already. Uh, so what I've done is I've clipped in two tanks of nitrogen tetroxide. <laughs> just, just, just a reminder, this could be more dangerous. Um, so there are two tanks here. Each of them are 48.64 tons. And we're also carrying uh, food, water, and oxygen. That's why I didn't make them 50 tons. Once you add the food, water, and oxygen to the 48.64 tons, you'll get the full 100 tons. So we've got the 100 ton payload and with the 100 ton payload and all of the methane here that we have full oxygen tank worth of methane again we swapped the tanks then we have 6,000 meters per second here now it takes 27 minutes to burn it but we wouldn't need to burn the whole thing at once uh, the most we would burn is about 4,000 meters per second so it'd be a longish burn but it wouldn't be impossible and I just wanted the engine to be as big as we needed so that the burn time would not be completely painful <laughs> basically we could still do it as one burn uh, so yeah now but you can see a thrust wave ratio of only 0.23 it's not great but it's manageable in space so it'll be efficient that way instead of carrying a heavier engine uh, to get this 6,000 meters per second, instead of having to fill up 1,000 tons of Starship propellant, all you have to do is fill up the difference between those two numbers, and that's three, 355, 354, 354 tons. So that's more manageable. Even better, on Mars, uh, since this is just going to capture around Mars into Mars orbit, we'll have a Mars lander. But we could have a Mars lander that uses the same tank configuration and just the vacuum engines. And in that case, it could lift off of Mars. And the spare methane that it would have, 
I mean, this will be more than a, a, the amount that you get from the oxygen and methane uh, would be more than enough to get off of Mars. So if you just uh, half tank the methane and fill up the oxygen, you get uh, 5,858 without any methane. If you fill it up with methane, you get just about enough delta V to get into Mars orbit. 4,200 is what I usually budget. You could do it with less. You might want to have a little bit more, uh, which is, you know, fine. You could use the, well, in that case, we wouldn't be carrying a nuclear engine, which maybe uh, because the ones that land on the surface, we don't want to use the nuclear engines on the surface because of radiation, because, uh, you know, people will be around down here and there is some latent radiation. The article from Tough F SF uh, explains this. There is some latent radiation around the reactor after it shuts down and that lasts for about a month. So we don't want people hanging out around here and since this is obviously close to the ground that wouldn't be great. So we are not going to carry the nuclear engine on the ones that land on Mars but this is uh, once you dump the nuclear engine uh, we would probably have enough delta V uh, to get into Mars orbit with a half load of the methane, this is right? Because it's only going to use half of the methane to do the launch to orbit, and the rest of the methane is payload. And you'd still be carrying 100 tons of payload. So if we didn't carry the 100, 100 tons of payload, there'd be even more margin, right? We've still got the 100 tons of payload in here. So it's a good deal for refueling. All you have to do is refuel the methane. And then the ship that's going to go back and forth between Earth and Mars will have a full load on two flights. So, yep, that is the that is the good side. Um, yep, and that's what I want. The, the reason why I'm interested in this is because I hate refueling Starship. And I don't want to do five trips or ten trips or anything like that. So if I can manage this in three trips... Two, three, two or three trips, that would be much more attractive to me as far as using Starship practically. So the question is, can we launch this to orbit <laughs> with the 100 tons of payload? Of course, without the payload, it's much easier. But there has to be a very particular balance between the oxygen and the methane if we're going to do this, because otherwise we are not going to get the delta V we need. And I want to get the thrust weight ratio to 0.64-ish at minimum for the launch part of it. So we could probably do a little bit more. That That's pretty okay. Let, let's actually type in numbers to see whether a better number would be preferable. Let's say... Now, we don't want more in... So there's more surplus methane, but we don't want that at the start. We're not going to use the nuclear engine until we get to orbit. Uh, this is, again, to assuage the worries of whoever. Uh, at some point, we would like to perhaps educate the public about the actual dangers and all. But, but for now, let's just keep everybody calm. And yeah, we won't use the nuclear engine until we get to, get to orbit. So we won't use it on launch. And we would like some extra delta V for the nuclear engine, uh, just to check it out, I suppose, and also do orbital station keeping maneuvers. We still would like also spare methane and oxygen for the RCS thrusters, because that will be helpful too. I would say that that's actually an okay mix there, but maybe we can load up a little bit more because I feel like our delta uh, our thrust weight ratio could take it that's the 0.64 thrust weight ratio I was looking for that's the most I, that's the tightest I want to deal with with this and so we then have about 500 meters per second with the nuclear engine there let's see if we can make it so I don't know yet but it's close I mean obviously if you take the 500 out that means we've got 10,000 meters per second and it's really a matter of how much we're reserving in the super heavy for its return if we need to reserve I'm going to reserve one tenth of the burn time so that is let's say 17 seconds uh, it's uh, 167 seconds total right now so that is what I'll try and reserve 10% and hope that that's enough. Let's save this. 
I'll lock the tanks so that the launch clamps don't replenish them. And so we typed in numbers. It's more or less half full on the methane and then maybe 90% on the liquid oxygen. Okay, keeping in mind that our Starship propellant is currently locked. We are launching from Boca Chica. And SAS on, throttle is up. And I think we've got, we've got enough engines. Let's not count them. Okay, hold on to your ears. Ignition. And launch. I may or may not get a good trajectory on this try. There would be room for optimization on that. We do need to go somewhat steeply to give Starship enough time to burn with just the three engines. I'm looking for about 2 minutes and 40 seconds time to apoapsis. We've got a burn time. Oh, let's unlock the stuff here. Seven minutes and twenty-five seconds. Let's throw all down here. Okay. Two more seconds. One more second. Shut off and separation and ignition. Now let's just quickly check how much delta V this has. 5,000 meters per second. So maybe that's enough, maybe not. Uh, we'd have to check that sometime. <laughs> if this looks promising enough. Now this has to make it to orbit, which is non-trivial. I've given the engines a little bit of gimbal. I mean, we could have cut that out and just used the RCS, but it is handy for this role in particular. I'm sure the RCS could handle it. So in this case we have not carried too much extra methane. That will have to come up by refueling. But once we bring it up, uh, we're looking at substantial delta V. I think I said 6,000, right? It's looking pretty tight. Well, if it wasn't going to be pretty tight, I wouldn't have to test it. Uh, we may come up just a tiny bit short, and then we'll need the nuclear engine to give us the final push, I guess. I don't know if they'd approve of that. Okay, uh, I would like to... I think maybe we could make it. Maybe we could just demonstrate... Uh... Okay, I want to reserve the rest for RCS. We've technically made orbit. We've got 50 meters per second left for RCS, which is not much, but we could have used the nuclear engine earlier, but now we are uh, in realism overhaul orbit anyway. So now this will hopefully work. Uh, staging is weird. Oh, speaking of RCS, we sort of need it to settle fuel down and stuff like that, huh? Okay. Now we're in business. Oop, they're gimbling a little bit too much there. Okay, okay, okay. So you get the picture. So we could make it. It'd be tight. But if you can fire the nuclear engine earlier, it wouldn't be so tight. And now we've already got sort of an idea of how many it would take. It would take three tanker trips up with methane and then from Mars it take two uh, 6,000 well of course uh, this isn't going to land on the moon so that's beside the point unless you want to have people walking around with uh, the reactor right there but anyway so that's the idea and this was just a quick exploration of the idea the possible use somebody had been bugging me to use a methane nuclear engine before and I did not like the idea. I still sort of don't but the difference in this case was I thought that the methane would only get 500-ish uh, 
seconds of specific impulse, so it didn't, you know, 500 to 600. 625 is a little bit better. <laughs> so anyway, uh, oh, so the specific use case of putting it on Starship is interesting. So we have, we have explored this idea. Let me know what you think about it. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.